Good afternoon. Normally, if I was up here, I'd be saying good morning, but it's good afternoon. Welcome to the most significant and special occasion. Welcome on behalf of Northminster United Church. This is a service of de to decommission this building, which has been home to Northminster for almost 70 years. Almost four years ago, Northminster began exploring the path of new ways forward. We wanted our focus to be about people and programs and our connections to the community, rather than the financial deficit created by an aging building. We started to dream about how to do this. And after significant com conversations, research, and guidance, we decided that to be able to be a strong, vibrant, people-focused future, it was time to sell our building. Our building has been a meeting place and tool for ministry. But one thing COVID taught us is that we can, can be a church without a building, at least for a little while. Church is about people, and we have continued to be a church throughout this transition time. Until we know where our new building will be, we are gratefully sharing the St. David's United Church building near the University of Calgary. We continue to offer Sunday worship, community outreach, programs for all ages, support people through difficult times and special milestones, and create fun opportunities, all in a safe and fully inclusive environment. Please make yourself comfortable throughout this service. Follow along on the PowerPoint or in your bulletin. Washrooms are located both upstairs and downstairs. And we hope you will move to the gym after our worship for cake and refreshments. There's an elevator for those who would appreciate the assistance. Let us now move into our time of worship. First pausing to give thanks that we live, work, worship, and play on Treaty 7 land. Lighting of the candle, please. And we light our Christ candle. This is the light of Christ. It is a holy light that fills all the spaces between us and God. It is a light that shines upon the past, the present, and the future. Thanks be to God. And good afternoon. Good to be here together. If you're comfortable standing, let's do that as we sing, Let Us Build a House.
Today we gather in this space to give thanks for this church building, which has faithfully served as the home for North Minister United Church here in Calgary. This will be the final service of worship in this building. And as a community of faith prepares to leave this church building and create a new home in our city. The baptismal font, the communion table, the pulpit, this whole worship space enable us to thankfully remember the countless services of worship and the sacraments celebrated in this place. And to bring to mind for ministers and lady leaders who have led worship here, for this worship space, loving God, we give you give thanks. thanks. The pews and you who are worshiping from them today are reminders of the congregations who have gathered over the years for Sunday services, funerals, weddings, and other celebrations that have taken place here. For worshipers over the years, loving God, we give, we you, give thanks. you thanks. The Bible is a reminder of the many programs that have been provided for people to grow in faith. Sunday school and kids zone, youth group, Bible study, CGIT, High C, Vacation Bible School, Community Youth Programming, for learning and growing in faith, loving God, we, we give, give you thanks. thanks. The hymn books are reminders of all the music created in this place. We remember pianists, organists, and other mu musicians, choirs, and technicians who have promoted, who have provided life and recorded music to supplement worship experiences. For voices in harmony, for voices united, loving God, we, we give, give you thanks. thanks. The kitchen utensils and dishes in our cupboards are symbols of all the meals that have been prepared, served, and shared here through the years. Turkey dinners, silent auctions, supper church, fundraisers like the craft fair, meals that remind us of all who have served, especially the United Church women and other groups whose service of hospitality nurtured body and soul. For humble service, loving God, we, we give, give you thanks. thanks. In this building are tools, symbolic of many hours that dedicated men and women put in over the years to maintain this building. For hard work inside and outside the church, for work unnoticed or unseen, loving God, we, we give, give you thanks. thanks. We come together with so many good and treasured memories, but with a so strong sense of grief at saying farewell to this hallowed place. We come together also with great hope for a continuing our life of faith in a new place. For the life of this community of faith, which will continue on, loving God, we, we give, give you thanks. thanks. Amen. Amen.
would like to invite anyone up to the front to join me for a story. And you really want to see the pictures in this one, so come close, please. Come on up. This is such a special day. Come and sit. As I was getting ready for today, I was thinking back to some of the very special memories that happened here that you, come on up, Jackson, that you have been a part of over the years in this exact space. So I remember, for example, most of your baptisms. So I remember, Alice, how little you were when you were born on an Easter Sunday and you were teeny tiny when you came to the church for the first time. <laughs> and I remember, Ruby, you were a bit bigger when you were baptized because you jumped down as soon as you were done being baptized and ran back to the coloring table because you were a bit older and that was your favorite thing to do. And I'm remembering lots of other things. Like I remember Nathan and Nash, you were teeny tiny babies when grandma and grandpa brought you to church for the first time. And Jackson, I remember when you and your mom and dad helped light the Advent candles during Christmas services. And Laura, how you would dress up in costumes for the pageants and how grandma would help with the pageants. And you were up here. And Lily, too, at pageants. And your baptism and your helping reading like you are today. So there's lots of special things. Oh, did you make something? Thanks, Nash. Lots of special memories we all have today. And I think this is why this book is extra important for all of us. There is a message, especially for the adults in this story today, that applies to this group who are joining us at the front for this story. And this book is called Dream, and I, I think you should all go and buy it because it, every page is, is colored and, and drawn by a different artist. It's just a beautiful book, and it has a great message for today. It's written by Susan Bosack. Okay, so let's share this story together. Look at this, dream. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Dream. And that's sort of what today is about as our church family um, parts from our church. I started out just like you, it says. Once long ago, when all the stars were born, I was a baby. My favorite color was yellow the color of the sun that peeked in my window in the morning. When you're a baby, you're cuddled and comforted in your own cozy little world. You smile and gurgle and fuss and cry and get fed and need changing and sleep and dream. It says, dream a dream with me. Look at this one. <laughs> Fun, hey? So you see it's a different artist on every page. It does look like clay, this one. I think it is. When my legs began to take me places, my favorite colors were bright, like rip-roaring red. There's a whole world to explore. Watching bubbles burst in your bath, tasting honey on toast, smelling every single flower in the garden, listening to laughter and thunder, touching your mother's face and your very own toes. As I got bigger, look at this color. As I got bigger, my favorite colors were those of a rainbow, like the violet across the sky, so real I could almost reach up and touch it. There's a whole world to imagine, castles in your backyard, pumpkins transformed into gilded carriages, fairy friends who play with you all day, monsters that crouch in the dark corners at night, wishes you make on stars. Ooh, look at this one. When I became a teenager, I liked blue. Everyone likes blue. There's a whole world to figure out. You think about finally growing up, who you are, what's important, where you're going, why you're going there, why you're going, when, you're, when the time is right, how it all fits together. And you think about having a good time along the way. See how the artists keep changing? They're all very unique, aren't they? Then, when I was a grown-up, young and strong, my favorite colors were simple black and white. It was easy to tell yes from no. There's a whole world to conquer, and you know exactly what you want. To make your own way, to be okay, to belong, to know things, to be you, 
and make a mark on the whole world. Great men and great women, some famous, most not. Great ideas, the impossible made possible. I could look at that page for a long time and see all the details in it. Yeah, I could play I Spy with that page. Great hopes and joys, fears and sorrows, and all the living in between. But as the days became years that spun by, my simple black and white world turned gray, the color of a dismal day. You hear so many voices, no way, they say, you're dreaming. Or you say to your, or you, or to yourself you say, things weren't supposed to be this way. You get tired, or maybe confused or scared. Maybe there's just too much, too big, too long, too hard. All you want to do is hide your head under the covers of your bed. We have days like that, don't we? It was gray, gray, gray. I didn't like the gray. Then something happened. It will always happen if you're looking. It might be a smile, a wink, a nod from someone you don't know. It might be a hug from someone who loves you. It might be a word or an idea carried on the wind from others. Or it might be a little nudge from deep inside you saying, get up. And then you understand the secret to dreaming a dreaming that, dreaming a dream that is, dreaming a dream. I was older and stronger once again. My favorite color was green. The color of go and the color of grow. I understood that the world at its best is green. Dreams grow like seeds. They need to take root, then stretch toward the sun. They grow slowly. They must be tended to. And sometimes a gray day gives them just the rain those seeds need. There's something else, too. I understood that to grow a dream, you need more than the one I was. You need the believe of childhood. You need the do of youth and the think of experience. You need all three. There's the wisdom to fill a tooth, simple and not so simple all at once. Believe, do, think. So, this is the most important page, I think. This is my favorite page. Now I am very, very old. My favorite color, yellow. The color of the billion, billion stars that sparkle in the night sky. I have dreamed a lifetime of dreams. I reached many of them. Not all, but many. Many also changed along the way. What I have most are fine memories. When you're as old as I am, you still dream dreams, but they're different. Mostly now, they're wishes for those who follow. When you're old as I am, you still dream dreams, but they're different. Mostly, they're wishes for those who follow. So look up, up, up into these billion, billion sparkling stars. What dreams do you find? Little dreams, big dreams, each a hope, looking for a life to make it real, a life like yours. Be a dreamer with everything around you, with everything before and after you, with everything that is you. Dream a dream, your very own dream. That's the end. So maybe our dreams and wishes in this place today are also indeed for all those who follow. Yes, amen. 
Thank you for listening. Let's go back to our seats, and now I think we have some scriptures that, to listen to you this afternoon. Our first reading is from Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 to 22. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said, if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. So God let the people around the desert road toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of Egypt ready for battle. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because Joseph had made the Israelites swear an oath. He had said, God will surely come to your aid and then you must carry my bones up with you from this place. After leaving Sochem, they camped at Edom on the edge of the desert. By day, the Lord went ahead of them on a, in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, left its place in front of the people. The word of God. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 6, verses 25 to 34. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds in the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet God feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what we will eat, or what we will drink, or what we will wear. For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, God knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. There's a short verse in Isaiah 60 that says, put your face in the sunlight. God rises on you, God's sunrise and glory breaks over you. Indeed, it feels like that today. This moment we have been waiting for and preparing for is now here in our midst. And we trust that God's light indeed brightly shines in our midst this day. This is a process we have been sharing in this transformational process for some time. 
this cocoon almost that has been creating and transforming and waiting has almost broken open now. It feels like in this moment, and here we are, and something beautiful is about to emerge. Here we are. What felt not quite real is now very real. And we've arrived at this moment of decommissioning our dear building that has been home for our church for 70 years. And so we now, in faith, in this moment, put our face to that sunlight and feel how God is indeed enfolding us, embracing us, transforming us with all the emotions of the day. That God's glory is breaking over us and helping us to fly as we dream. Yes, there is still that feeling of uncertainty a little bit, but also opportunity. People who embrace change as an opportunity to live and to grow, who lean into that change, well, it actually makes life better. And I would say that when we lean into that change, that is the more faithful response, when we can embrace it rather than run from it. And Northminster, you have done that so well. Because like that cocoon, something creative, something transformative is occurring, and it's emerging. And you have faithfully been living examples of something emerging. We follow a God who said from the beginning that God wants to change us. Romans 12 says, don't be conformed, be transformed, be changed. The call to follow Jesus is that constant movement of change. It is essential to our faith as Christians. We are a people with a history of risking and journeying towards something that God is calling us to. It's part of our history. Today's first scripture is that story indeed of that journey to the promised land. We are a people whose faith is constantly about transformation and being transformed. The best part about Northminster living out this transformative faith is that you are writing your own script. You are being the creators and the writers of your very own story. You are the ones dreaming and writing and shaping your own future. A big shift is happening in the world around us and you are actively participating in the shaping of your future story rather than letting all the change around us shape the future for us. You are writing your own story. You are doing that. Being Northminster in the future matters to you. Even in a year of tremendous change, even in a year when you said goodbye to this building, you have a 50-page annual report full of stories and photos that tell the story about how Northminster in the last year has impacted people's lives and engaged the community. Because you are shaping your own story. Like the Israelites, you courageously stepped into the water when the sea parted, and you've been across the desert, even when you didn't know quite where the promised land is yet. And you trusted that there was that pillar of light to guide you, and there would be provisions along the way, and that you were not alone, that people have been alongside you through it all, and of course, so is God. Scripture says God has brought us to this place for a reason. The wilderness in its uncertainty is a big part of the journey. And we're still there as we dream the future. It helps us clarify our purpose, that that wilderness time helps us to develop and mature. It's in the wilderness we learn a lot, like who our friends and our partners are and how we need to be authentic and what really are our values. 
We learn lessons whether we choose them or not. In the wilderness, we learn things that we can't learn in our comfort zone. The wilderness helps us rely more on God and less on ourselves, I think. God says something repeatedly on that journey to the promised land in our Bible. Many times, in many different ways, God says, have courage. Why? Four times in a very short period, God says, have courage in different ways. Have courage because I am with you. I will be with you. I will never leave or forsake you. I will be with you wherever you go. God says to the Israelites, I want you to have courage. Not because you are great, not because you have it all figured out, so you've earned the right to be courageous. Nothing like that. But have courage because of who God is in your midst. Have courage because of who God is in your midst. This, I think, is the heart of that Exodus story. The good news of scripture that we can do things and face things that alone we could never face. Or we can try new things that we thought we couldn't do or that we never thought we'd have the ability to accomplish because as God says, I am with you. There is a power available to you. The answer to fear is divine presence. That's what God is saying to each of us every moment of our lives. And that's the power of this story to the Israelites and to all of us. Either when hard things happen to us in life or when we dream big things and seek to write and shape our own future, even when we can't see the destination yet, God is saying we don't have to be scared. Do not be worried. I am going with you and alongside you and supporting you and carrying you right with you as you journey to something new. When we live out our lives in faith, we have a power within us that we can do so much more than we think or try things or face things because that power is available to us, not defined by fear, but have courage. Do you remember four or five years ago when we started this conversation and how nervous we felt about so much of this and now we're doing it? Remember, those, those are normal fears, and, but with that courage and that dreaming, we have come so far. When we feel called to something new, to follow a dream or start a new venture, or when we, in our lives, lose someone we love, or face a diagnosis, or whatever it is we battle in our life, face it with courage, because we are not alone when we see injustices or need to speak up, or when we are worried about what people will think, when we lose an opportunity or whether we have an opportunity, we buck the trend and try something new to use our resources more faithfully to go out into the world and live with courage because God is nudging us in a new direction. I want to live with more boldness and courage in my own life, and I want that for all of you as well. The answer to our fear is the presence of God. This is where that Exodus story gets to the heart of what God is saying. I want you to know that the God that has brought you this far already through a lot of things in life, is the same God who will be with you going forward. And I want that for our church as well, that we may look to the future with courage and dream and wonder and hope what might emerge. Today we feel all the emotions, don't we, of this significant day. May, and maybe this is an ending in a way, but also it's a beginning. And the next step 
It is certainly the next step in Northminster's faithful writing of the story that is to come. As Romans 8 says to end, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love God, who have been called according to God's purpose. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. And let me read you this one page again, having heard this reflection. I have dreamed a lifetime of dreams. I reached many of them, but not all, but many. Many also changed along the way. What I have most are fine memories. When you're as old as I am, you still dream dreams, but they're different. Mostly, they're wishes for those who follow. Amen. It's time for us to sing again. Stand if you're comfortable doing so. We'll sing, Will You Come and Follow Me? today, may we be mindful of all that we have received and continue to receive from God who blesses us with love, peace, kindness. I mean, and kindness. Let us pray. Creator God, we make our offering today, giving thanks for the life we receive from you. Redeeming Christ, we make our offering today giving thanks for the grace we receive from you. Sustaining Spirit, we make our offering today giving thanks for the hope we receive from you, God. May all that we offer receive your blessing. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we move into communion, does everybody have our communion packages? Put your hand up if you don't, and the ushers will bring you one. Is there a couple more needed here? Does everybody has them? Okay, great.
Our offering baskets are located at each exit, and our offerings, as we have blessed already, are most welcome this day. I welcome to share in the sacrament of, con of, of communion with me, um, Reverend Rachel Naden, who is a student minister, is now a diaconal minister, so it's a pleasure to share the table <laughs> with you. Let us begin. Carrying a vision of creation healed and restored, we welcome all in the name of Christ. The open table speaks of the shining promise of barriers broken and creation healed. At this table, all are welcome. We place our hope in God. We sing of life beyond life and a future good beyond imagining, a new heaven and a new earth. Grateful for God's loving action. We cannot, cannot keep, keep from, from singing. singing. We, are we are grateful for God's, God's loving action. action. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Let's remain seated as we sing. Remember Jesus, born to a woman in poverty, in a time of social upheaval, a time of political oppression. He knew human joy and sorrow. So filled with the Holy Spirit was he that in him people experienced the presence of God among them. Jesus announced the coming of God's reign, a commonwealth not of domination, but of peace, justice, and reconciliation. He healed the sick and fed the hungry. He forgave sins and fed those held captive. He preached and practiced unconditional love, and his command, he commanded his followers to love one another as he loved them. We remember that on the night before he died, Jesus was gathered with his closest friends for a meal. And there he took bread, gave thanks to God, and broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take, eat, this is the bread of life. When you eat it, remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God, and giving it to his friends, he said, Take, drink. This is the cup of promise. When you drink from it, remember me. Grateful for God's loving action, we cannot keep from offering God our praise, proclaiming the mystery of faith. By, By becoming, becoming flesh in Jesus, Jesus God, God made all, all things new. In Jesus' life, teaching, and self-offering, God empowers us to live in love. In Jesus' resurrection, God bears the sin, grief, and suffering of the world. In Jesus' resurrection, God overcomes death. Nothing separates us from the love of God. In response to your abundant love, O God, we bear in mind our integral connection to the earth and one another, pointing us to the presence of the holy in the world. As a church, we receive, bless, and share visible signs of your grace and these ordinary things of life, bread and cup, that point beyond themselves to you and your love, teaching us to be alert to the sacred in the midst of life. And we sing.
I'll invite you to have your, your communion packages on hand as we now break the bread and share in the cup. Bless the cup. May this bread, broken, bring fullness and bring wholeness to life. Thanks be to God. We share in the bread. May this cup pour it out and quench and make quench thirsty souls. Thanks be to God. We share in the cup. And Lisa will come forward now to share in our prayer after communion. In the sharing of this sacred meal, Let us pray for God's good news to be lived out. Holy God, we pray that we may become a church with purpose, where faith is nurtured and hearts are comforted, where gifts are shared for the good of all, where we may resist the forces that exploit and marginalize, be members of a community that is held and inspired by you, instruments of the loving spirit of Christ Mending creation, we pray in sincerity and hope. Amen. Choir. (laughs) 
I invite now Reverend Dr. Karen Medland, who is the personnel minister and our representative today, and a colleague of mine and a, a classmate from 21 years ago, <laughs> to, uh, to bring us readings from the region and to now lead the decommissioning portion of our worship. Thank you, Nancy. It was 21 years ago. <gasps> but we don't look it, right? I am, as Nancy says, the Reverend Dr. Karen Medland. I am Pastoral Relations and Community of Faith Support Minister for Chinook Winds Region. And on behalf of our Executive Minister, Trina Duncan, and all the region, I bring you blessings and greetings on this auspicious day today. And in particular, we wanted to share with Nancy as your leader, as she takes you through what is to be and this dream, we wanted to present Nancy with this prayer shawl. And I love of, of all of the rainbow of colors that I could have chosen, I chose the green one when she talked in that story of green being the, the color of newness and growth. Today, we have celebrated with thanksgiving the life and work of Northminster United Church in this location in North Calgary. It has served as a witness to God's presence since it has provided refuge, comfort, and challenges for God's people. It has served for generations the faithful people of this community, this building, dedicated and named Northminster United Church, together with the land on which it stands and all the objects in it, we now commend to other purposes. We declare as of May 31st, 2023, it is no longer the place of meeting of a congregation of the United Church of Canada. As Northminster United continues its life beyond these walls and dreaming of its future, you will be taking some of the symbols and artifacts with you. This Bible, Christ candle, communion chalice, and baptismal pitcher represent some of the possessions you will take. These items represent your United Church of Canada heritage, as well as the past, the present, and the future that you will share with all God's people. And may you be blessed in all of that as you go forth. And so we join our voices once more in song and stand as we are able to sing from Voices United number 575, I'm going to live.
let's actually stay standing if I've caught you. I'm going to miss Sarah going on the organ, that Hammond organ. It's, it's, but that was a fun one to end with today. Um, I know we've already lost some of our great hospitality crew to the basement, but after the blessing, I would love if we could all crowd into the middle for a group photo of everyone who is here today. So hopefully we won't miss too many more. But let's offer a blessing and then we will stay for our photo and then move to our gymnasium for, for cake and other snacks and reception. Join me with these words. Oh God, you have called us to dream, to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths not taken through risks unknown. Give us faith to go out with courage not knowing the where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Friends, go from here with the assurance that there is nowhere you can be where God is not also there. There is nowhere you can be where Jesus is not with you. Where there is nowhere you can be where the Holy Spirit cannot reach. Go from here assured that you are so very blessed by God. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.